Analyze for Microsoft is basically FX Cop built into Visual Studio. It comes with the higher versions of Visual Studio. So it's a stack analysis tool, checks all the violations. This is exactly what Microsoft uses themselves. You should enable this. I'm going to show you this on uh, every build. Every time you build, it should be detecting these. It checks for globalization, security, maintainability, performance, right? And it can be run during the command line. You should be using this to make sure that your code is uh, okay. So, well, the first thing you have to do is to, to run it in Visual Studio is you need to go to the properties of your project and enable code analysis on build. This is not default. And you need to do this not only when you go to work Monday, but any new project should be the first. This is why my chap the first chapter of my book is how to set up your projects correctly. <laughs> so you should do this because now on every build, it's going to come up in 2013 in, the, in, in one of your windows of the, all the problems you have in your project. And you need to fix them while you're coding, not later. It's so much more expensive. We'll talk about that in my coding standards talk to fix them when QA finds it or your, your customers find it. You need to fix it right away because it's very cheap and very easy to fix. My project at my last company, I turned this on and then, then turned it off because we exceeded the maximum number of violations and it was slowing down the build. In, one, in, in our project, we had something like 20,000 something violations. And the thing with these, any of these violations, if, if you, and I did this, if you go up to your PM or manager and say, hey, you know, we need to go fix these 20,000 something violations. Do you think they're gonna say, okay, Dave, no, we'll give you the time to do that? Absolutely not. They will never, I've never had given time to do that. I mostly do it on my own time because <laughs> I don't want the product to just completely fail. This is how Analyze works in Visual Studio. To run it, I usually just go to the project. I right mouse click. I go to Analyze and run code analysis. That builds the project, does the analysis, and then brings up the analysis in this window over here. So you can see there's lots of, uh, there's 829 violations in this one project. The first one is actually one of my favorite ones that I talk about in my coding standards book, which is uh, mark assemblies with CLS compliant attribute. So if I go over here and click on that, uh, this one actually doesn't take me to the file. So I've got to go to solution editor, uh, go to properties, assembly info. It's not going to have the namespace automatically in this file, so I can choose a using uh, or just a system CLS compliant. I'm going to choose just a using, so that works. And then just say true. That's all you have to do. And now every time if you, uh, every time you build, if you do something CLS not compliant, then it'll break the build and uh, tell you where you need to fix it. There are actions you can do. You can create work items so you can work on it later. You can suppress the message. You want to find out more detail about this violation. You can simply just click on the violation number. You can actually search in Bing uh, for this violation number. It usually comes right up. And when I click on the violation number, then it's going to give me a full-blown description on what this violation actually is. Uh, you can change it to different um, Visual Studio versions. I'm not sure if it detects it by itself. It'll give you the full descriptions, how to fix it, um, when to suppress the warnings, and it'll give you some sample code. So you can get more information on why this is not a good idea. So for this example, it's an easy one. Uh, do not declare visible instance fields. If I click on that, you can see it uh, highlights it for me, and this is the uh, this is the field I need to change. In this case, it's uh, better to turn it into a property like this. So if I click this on, you can see that all 89 of these are where dispose is not being called correctly. Another another thing I talk a lot about in my coding standards talk. In this case, 89 times in this one assembly, they're not calling dispose correctly. I looked at this assembly and all 89 cases are exactly the same thing. They're not properly um, disposing of the SQL command. To fix this, it's uh, very easy to do. I would just, um, so I change it into a using statement and uh, this will take care of not only the close but the dispose for you too. So if you do using SQL command and the command you're doing 
and right when it hits this bracket right here, it's going to call dispose on the object, and then that, in, this, in the case of SQL command, it'll also call close. It will find design issues like validate arguments of public methods, which is a big one if you're doing encapsulation. Well, you're not doing encapsulation if you're getting violations like this. Maintainability is a good one because you can get unmaintainable code, uh, excessive complexity, so you can easily see the methods you need to work on that are way too big. And in usage, it finds some interesting things uh, I don't think people think about, like do not ignore method results. Uh, usually you need to do something with that. Uh, don't dispose objects multiple times. In this assembly, are they not only not disposing objects correctly, they're disposing of them multiple times. Something else with Analyze is you can um, calculate code metrics for your solution or an assembly. So if we click on that, you can see here the total cyclomatic complexity is uh, 1,452. For example, this method right here, cyclomatic complexity of 243, way too high, class coupling 48, way too high, lines of code 421. So that's uh, much, much too high for a single method. So you can go in there and easily identify which of these methods need to be attacked first. You can also use Analyze to find uh, duplicate code, another bad, bad thing for maintenance. So you just simply go Analyze, Analyze Solution for Code Clones. You can see we have uh, some code clone counts of uh, 15, 12, 11, 10, 5. To me, if there's even one, that's too high. This is an easy way to go in and tackle the code clones that you need to take care of. It touched on a couple things that um, I'd, I'd like to ask people if they know. So the first one is, who knows what the CLS compliant means? The CLS compliant, and I beat this into my students' heads, is the spec for .NET. To be a .NET language, you must follow the CLS. You can do more than the CLS, which C-sharp does and other languages do, but you minimally have to follow the CLS. If you don't, you're not a .NET language. What happens is that when you turn this on and, and you build, it'll break the build if you're doing something that's not CLS compliant. That means another .NET language might not be able to use whatever you're doing, right? And you need to stop and think about that. <laughs> you know, if you really want to do it, there's ways to do both. You know, just go look it up. But this is a big deal, especially in C-sharp, because you can do stuff that's not CLS compliant. The other one I like to ask, who knows what cyclomatic complexity means? That is the number of paths your code can, your method, the, the code can take in your method, right? And when I talk about method, I'm talking about properties, functions, whatever. It's all, they're all methods, right? So that's the number of paths can happen. How many people do unit testing on their code? Not enough. What cyclomatic complexity really means in the, in the nutshell is that that number, which you saw there, and that one thing was, what, 900 and something on one method, means that that's the number of unit tests you must write minimally. Because for every path your code can take, you need to have a unit test. You need to get that number down, because that's not only the complexity of it, but how many unit tests you need to write. Refactor, refactor, refactor. And unfortunately, this is another thing that most managers won't give you time to do. But if you do it in the beginning, it's really fast and easy.